Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to begin by creating features from dimensions. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new file. And when I do that, um, my stock properties window opens and I'm prompted to specify the dimensions of my part. So I want the width of my part, in this case here, to be four inches. I want the length of my part to be six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And then I want the thickness of my part to be two inches. And when I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and click Finish. I'll get another window that opens for additional information about the stock. Um, and then I'm going to click OK. So now I have my stock here. It's four inches by six inches by two inches. And we're going to begin by creating the same hole and the same pocket feature that we saw in the prior video. So if you recall, we, in the toolbox, we can use the Steps menu to click on the Features icon. And we get our new Features window that opens. And we're prompted uh, for uh, what type of feature that we want to create from dimensions. So in this case here, I want to create a hole. So I click on the Hole Radio button. You'll note that there's an illustration uh, or a figure that opens up uh, in the bottom left-hand corner. Just a quick overview of what it is that I'm trying to create. And then I click the Next button. And now I'm to the point where I'm going to be entering some information, some dimensional information uh, related to my hole. So the chamfer, we're going to go ahead and leave this, uh, this dimension box uh, or dimension field blank. Um, I want the depth of my hole to be one inch. So we're going to go ahead and leave that in place. And the diameter of the hole is going to be a quarter of an inch or 0.25. So once we've entered that information, we'll click Next. And now we're prompted for the location of our hole. And you'll note that by default it's set up at uh, XYZ0. And that puts our hole at the lower left-hand corner of the part. And that's obviously not where we want it to be. So we're going to change these dimensions. So let's change the X dimension to be 1 inch. Change our Y dimension to be 0.75, which is 3 quarters of an inch. And the Z dimension we will leave at 0. And look, our hole is located in the proper location. And uh, we'll click Next again. And now we're prompted for some strategies for creating the hole. In this case here, we want to do a drill only. We want to spot drill. And then we want to final drill the part. So there'll be two operations associated with this particular hole. And from this point, we can click Finish. And you can see that the Hole Feature Properties window opens. And it gives us all the information related to our hole. Um, in the left-hand side, we see the operations list. There's a spot drill that's associated with the hole, and finally a drilling operation. The dimensions of our hole are listed in the Dimensions tab. The Locations tab will show us the exact XYZ position of our hole. The Strategy tells us how that particular hole or feature is produced. In this case here, it's done by spot drilling uh, and then finally drilling to size. And from here, we can hit OK and we have successfully completed our hole. Now, um, the other feature that we want to create is a pocket. So let's go ahead and click on Features. And this time, we're prompted for the type of feature that we want to create again. In this case here, we're going to click on the Rectangular Pocket Radio button. And then we'll click Next. And now we're prompted to enter or input the dimensions associated with our pocket. So. The length of our pocket will be 2 inches, the width will be 1 inch, corner radius will be 0.25, and the overall depth of the pocket will be 0.25 as well. So I could change these if I wanted to, but for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, these dimensions will remain in place as they are. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And now, just like the hole, I'm prompted for the pocket location. So let's change our X dimension to 2.5. Our Y dimension, we will change to 1.75. And the Z, we will leave, we'll leave that in place as it is at 0. And you'll see now our pocket feature is showing in the proper location as we referenced in the previous video. So let's go ahead and click Next. And here's our strategy for machining our pocket. 
Now note that the pocket is climb milled. This will give us a, a very good finish on the, on the wall of the pocket. Um, we're going to take depth or plunge cuts first. And there's a, going to be a roughing pass, which is bi-directional roughing. And then we're also going to be doing a, finish, a finishing pass. So again, there are multiple operations that are associated with our pocket here as well, just like our hole. So from this point, we can click Finish. And now we get the rectangular pocket properties window that opens up. And you can see that with our pocket, or we have uh, two roughing passes and a finish pass. So there are three operations associated with our pocket. And here's the dimensions. Here's the locations tab and the machining strategy. And any of these features can be edited. And we'll go in and, sh and show you how to do that here uh, in just a second. So let's go ahead and click OK from this point. And now we've successfully created both of the features that we intended to create from dimensions. Now, if I wanted to edit any of these features, what I could do is hit the part view. And note, if you recall from the prior video, in the setup tree, you'll see here's our hole and here's our rectangular pocket. Let's say I wanted to edit the features associated with dimensions that are associated with my hole. I just simply double click and now my whole feature properties open up and I can change any of the dimensions or locations um, or even the operations or the machining strategy for this particular uh, hole. If I wanted to edit my pocket, double click on the rectangular pocket and here's my rectangular pocket properties window. So very easy to edit the properties that are associated with the pocket. But I guess the real question is, what does this particular part look like when it's machined? And here is one of the most valuable functions um, of CAM software, and this is the simulation. If you recall, I made sure uh, before we started the lesson to, to show you how to open up or to activate the simulation toolbar that you see here in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So, but before we simulate our part, we want to make sure we put it in the proper view to best show these features being machined. So in the view menu, in the upper left, we're going ahead and click that, click uh, um, uh, the principal views, and we want to select isometric. And isometric is kind of a three-dimensional view of our part. Um, and now you can see kind of a wireframe view of our drawing, or I should say the part. Um, with our features kind of represented uh, almost as if the part were invisible and it doesn't really represent uh, what a truly uh, a true machine part would look like. So what I want to do now is show you how to do the 3D simulation to actually machine this part in the virtual environment. So on the virtual or on the uh, simulation toolbar, we're going to click on the 3D simulation icon. okay And when you do that, note that that icon highlights. And what we can do now is physically push the play button. We'll turn our machining simulation speed all the way down, and then we'll click on the play button and watch the part be physically machined. And there you have it. Now we've machined that part in the virtual environment. Now I want to take, if I want to look at these features a little bit closer, what I can do is go to the view menu and select principal view. And I can look at it from different angles, like uh, the, the top view would show the part. Or if I could switch the principal view to the isometric three view to kind of look at it from a different, same isometric view, but just a different angle. Um, I could also look at the trackball view. And now with the mouse, I can roll the part around and kind of position it in the, pos in the, uh, in the view that I can best see the features. I can also roll the wheel on the mouse to zoom in on some of these features a little bit closer. Okay, so now to reset it, all I need to do is go back to principal views, back to my top view, zoom out, and to go back to our wireframe, what we want to do is push the eject button on the 3D simulation. And we push eject, and there we are. We're right back to our same part view um, that we originally started with. Mm -hmm.